Hi, welcome back to Cleaning Business TV, the internet's only television station dedicated to cleaning businesses. That's because we're the only ones crazy enough well, to do this. That's absolutely correct. Uh, I'm Ron, uh, CEO and founder of uh, the fastest growing cleaning company in America, Two Maids and a Mop. And I'm David Luke, Vice President for Two Maids and a Mop. So uh, the last couple of weeks, we've talked about a variety of things ranging from how to get the phone to ring to how to build a cleaning business and uh, all of that's extremely important. But you can't have a business unless you perform some of the necessary legal functions. So today we're actually going to talk about the science behind starting a business. And this is going to specifically you know, uh, talk about cleaning businesses, but it's also going to apply to really any business out there. So whether you're in the cleaning business or, clean, or cleaning industry or another industry, uh, listen to us today because you're, you're going to learn a lot. So let's just kind of start digging in. And before you get sleepy here, understand that what we're going to be talking about, we're going to try to make this as exciting as possible. But unfortunately, when you get into the weeds of starting a business, there are some less sexy things. So I'm not talking about you. Because mm, I feel sexy. <laughs> yeah. So where do you start? Well, most people think, well, you start with naming your business. And that actually is where you start, but it's not where you end. So have fun with it. Start a business. Name it whatever you want. Some people spend five minutes. Some people spend five months determining what the name is. For us, I'll tell a funny story. Two Maids and a Mop was started 11 years ago. And uh, at the time, we, we were operating under a, a different uh, name. What was, name was that? Well, it was a it was a family name, and I'm not going to say that on uh, live TV because mm, we're on the internet. Mm. But uh, it, it did have some funny um, references inside of it. So just if you want to do some research and get a good <laughs> laugh, uh, look us up uh, pre 2003. Uh, but uh, anyway, so when we were looking to name the business, we said, "What can we do uh, that implies house cleaning, but also sounds uh, generic enough that we can really scale this beyond our local market at the time, which was Pensacola, Florida?" So we used Google, um, which in 2000, today I should say, not a big deal. But in 2003, using the Google was actually a pretty big deal. So we Googled uh, businesses all over the country and there was a Two Maids and a Mop located in Seattle, Washington. We called, or I called uh, the local company and I said, hey, this is uh, Ron in Pensacola, Florida. I'd like to use your name, can we do it? And they go, whatever, yeah, sure. You know, We're just literally Two Maids and a Mop. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah, Seattle, hopefully you're still out there. Um, so, uh, yeah, th that's how we started, and everybody has heard all sorts of different names. I've heard really crazy things like uh, <laughs> global cleaning businesses of whatever city, which it's kind of funny, right? Yeah, that's weird. But, yeah. I've heard uh, universal cleaning services of local markets. So, and then I've heard some really cool ones, too. So um, think about that. Have fun with it, because th that's definitely going to be the most fun thing we talk about here today, because a lot of the stuff we talk about is going to be some just legalese. Um, so you got your business name. Uh, what do you do next? Well, you got to create some type of legal business entity, and that's really going to be based on what you're currently um, involved in. And so it could be that you're by yourself. It could be that you're with a group of people or just uh, one other person. Um, and that is a, you've got to determine that more than anything else. Uh, and that may seem ridiculous for me to say that, but you'd be surprised how many people we talk to because we are franchising now and we talk to people who are looking to start a business. People don't understand that they've got to do more than just name their business and they actually have to determine how many people are part of their business. In some cases, some people provide money and another person provides um, the sweat equity. So yeah, you got to include everybody inside that business entity. So let's just kind of, I'm not a lawyer. So, you know, if you really want some real legal advice, that's the first thing I'd probably do is reach out to a local attorney and every market's got a great attorney that can deal with basic business concepts. But we will tell you some basic things that we've learned through the School of Hard Knocks. Um, one, sole proprietorship. That's what most people are, at least most small businesses are throughout the country, certainly what most cleaning businesses are. Uh, and it's just what it sounds like. You're by yourself. Um, you're out there, you're running a business, you're collecting revenues, you're paying bills, and you're hopefully making money. So uh, why would everyone not be that? M mainly because there's a lot of liability when it comes to, to uh, sole proprietorships, and there's some tax consequences too, because basically that money that you're bringing in is gonna be assumed as part of your personal income. So have I bored you yet? Have I bored you yet? What? Yeah. What's that mean? <laughs> so sole proprietorship, partnership, um, the fancy name is a legal partnership. 
Um, that's just what it sounds like. If you have someone other than yourself a part of the business and you don't want to go through the corporation um, route, which we'll get to in a second, then you can create a partnership. And it's basically the same thing as a sole proprietorship, except there's multiple entities. And when I say multiple, it can be a hundred. Most, most of the time it's two or three people. Um, I would I would advise against both of those, even though they're easier to get started because literally you don't need to do anything. You just, at the end of the year when you do your taxes, say I'm a sole proprietorship or a partnership. Um, the next three options or next two options we're going to provide you are a little bit more complicated and time consuming, but at the end of the day, absolutely vital in order to protect you, your family, and, and your business. So. Uh, the, the most popular one is uh, a corporation. You know, everybody knows what that is. And I said we were going to talk about two or three more, but really they're all corporations, but there's just different entities within, within a corporation. So we'll kind of go through those real quickly. A uh, S corporation, a C corporation, and a limited liability uh, corporation. So what, what, is it, what does that mean? Uh, again, an attorney's going to give you a lot more information than we can give you here. A simple Google search will do the same thing. Most businesses are either an LLC, or an S Corp. Uh, Two Maids in the Mop uh, is an LLC, and uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, number one, liability. It's in the name, LLC. And the same thing, by the way, goes for S Corp. If something were to go wrong, and I know that's hard to think, and is this real wood? I'm not sure. Uh, well, if it is, hopefully it is. But if something were to go wrong, then you need to make sure you're protected within sole proprietorship and with a partnership. If something goes wrong, when I mean something goes wrong, I mean anything from theft to uh, some type of uh, injury to one of your employees or customers. Um, you know, f I hate to say it, but even if there's some kind of type of uh, death, um, anything you can think of, if something were to go wrong with a sole proprietorship and a partnership, that liability goes to you personally. So your entire livelihood is at risk. So an, a corporation actually protects you and uh, allows that uh, sort of separation to occur. So if something happens within the business, that business is responsible for that uh, damage or, or whatever it might be. Whereas personally, you're, you're outside of the loop. So they can't come get your home or your car or you know, money in a savings account or whatever it might be. So uh, what's the other reason? Taxation, another awesome subject and very interesting subject. But it's important because again, with the sole proprietorship and the uh, partnership, that's gonna be taxed uh, just in your personal income. So that's good and bad. Uh, the bad is you're not going to be able to fully enjoy a lot of tax deductions that you will be able to enjoy in, inside of an actual corporation. In other words, if you're um, buying uh, lunch for uh, a vendor, you know, it, you're, it's going to be very difficult to actually deduct that expense if you're using a sole proprietorship because that may be your friend as well. So it, it, that vendor has to actually be a vendor, but inside of a corporation, as long as that, ven that vendor could be you even. You could have a separate entity that provides a service to you. And if you're going out to lunch, that lunch can be deducted. So there's a lot of tax reasons for forming an actual corporation rather than just having a sole proprietorship and, and, and a partnership. So um, as, as boring as that sounds, those things are absolutely essential because you do not want to be hit um, from left field with some type of big legal problem. And they, and they do occur. Beyond that, there's a third reason to, to perform a corporation and to make sure that you actually get an attorney involved here. If down the road you have multiple uh, shareholders slash members in an LLC, they're called members, then you know things are going to happen. You're going to start making money or and or losing money. I guess you can't and or with that. Mm -hmm. You can make money. Or no, you're money. either going to make yeah. it or not. <laughs> so if you're if you're losing money. People aren't going to be very happy. So you're going to need to make sure that you've got specific bylaws. Uh, to address certain situations. And, um, imagine if you're the primary member or the managing member uh, of the LLC and you know something happens to you where you physically can't provide the service anymore for the business. There's got to be some type of uh, system in place, documentation in place that says this is what happens if you were to, to not be here any longer. Um, the same the same goes if uh, if you're actually making money and maybe one day you want to sell the business because there's two ways to make money in a business by the way this is uh, business 101 what are the two ways 
To, is, two ways to make is money. Is this a tough question? It's, it, it's tough. Okay. It's not me. Let me. You either make money in the business or you make money selling it. Yes. You make money in the business, which is usually in the form of a distribution. You probably think paycheck, but the actual reason to, to own a business is to make money through a distribution slash dividend. And then secondly, like David said, if you sell that business. So imagine you're making a bunch of money and you want to sell this thing at some point for who knows how much. Then you need to have some language inside your paperwork, your your corporation paperwork that says what's going to happen when that day comes. So all of this is big time forward thinking stuff, but you have to think forward in order to prepare yourself for that day because you always got to be thinking success. You can't ever be thinking that this is just going to be, uh, you know, a dozen customers Monday through Friday and, you know, home at five o'clock. Even though we there are, there are some things we can do at Two Maids and a Mop to make sure you're home at five o'clock, the reality is even though you're physically done, there's going to be some outside work beyond that if you get beyond that dozen work um, field. So that's the, the tax stuff that's going to be required. That's the co the corporation stuff that's going to be required. Stuff, is that, a, is that a technical word? It is technical, okay. sure. That's what I was thinking. So... Uh, so, like I said, there's there's two things I would I would recommend highly 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 recommend. Number one, I'm gonna, I'm going to add a third to that. Please, the third do. one's we cool. Were so number third. number one, contact an attorney. How do you find an attorney? Google, <laughs> Yahoo. Google seems to be a constant thing with us. Yeah, there is this. We talked about this three weeks ago, but there's a thing called Yellow Pages that may help you as well. Maybe. So yeah, call a, call an attorney and, and he'll lead you down the road. A second thing is to is to do your own research. There's a lot of information the federal government uh, provides that really uh, lends, sends you in the right direction. And my third is a little bit of a homerism here, but uh, two minutes of can teach you how to do that too. Mm, so. That feels good again. <laughs> So, uh, taxes, how to start a business, uh, how to name your business, all that good stuff's out of the way. Now the business is open. What are you going to do to protect yourself, David? Well, you're going to need insurance. You're not going to just need uh, a home insurance or car insurance. You're going to need uh, insurance for your business. You're going to need a GL policy. You're going to need uh, a bond. What does GL uh, mean? Are you ready to know? Oh, no. You want to know Sorry. right now? Sorry, guys. General Stay liability. Tuned. It's general liability. <laughs> Uh, you're going to need a bond, and you're going to need work, workers' compensation. Uh, now, general liability policy is basically anything. Anything could go wrong in the business. Uh, um, we damage uh, you, one of your employees or, or team members damages something inside the home. Uh, they do damage to uh, the car or to the home of another person, you name it. General liability co covers a lot of different things. Now, it, with the insurance issues, you're going to need to talk to your own insurance agent, uh, and go over the, the details of all these. The next is a bond. A bond is if uh, one of your employees steals something uh, from a customer. God forbid that ever happened, but you need protection if it ever does, uh, and a bond will cover you in that regard. Now, for a bond, I want to make sure that you understand that in order for an employee to be bondable, you have to do a background check. They have to be over 18. They can't have any past felonies. Um, you have to do your due diligence even with that to get a person who is bondable to work uh, for your company. Uh, so that's one, GL, then bond, and then workers' compensation. Now, workers' compensation, uh, to give you an idea of the cost of that, uh, generally it's about a 5% of whatever the uh, um, payroll cost is. It's about 5% uh, of that is uh, the general rule of thumb. Um, workers' compensation is going to protect the employee and, and protect you also from them suing you and then in the event, again, that they get injured on the job or if they sprain their wrist or uh, break a bone or you name it, workers' compensation will protect you as a business owner and you have to have that. There's no if ands, or buts around having a GL policy, a bond, and workers' compensation. Now, interestingly enough, there are a lot of cleaning businesses out there a lot of the we've already discussed there's millions of cleaning businesses out there and this is one area where i think gosh i don't have the statistics for this maybe 60 70 percent of the cleaning businesses out there skip these skip these policies that are vital and necessary to your protection and to really to protect the whole business uh, as a whole so those are just three things if you want to get into business and you want to grow and have the structure to allow you to grow without, um, w to minimize your risk even uh, in the future. I, I didn't know you were that passionate about insurance. I know. It felt, risk it risk felt, management is good. I didn't me. realize. I didn't even make your risk management, but I like <laughs> it. It felt good. So let, let's kind of back up and just kind of recap that. And, and I'd like to 
if you'll stick around for a little bit, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our story um, because we do have 11 years of hard knocks behind us and we've lived through the exercising of all of those insurance policies over time. Um, and the only reason I'm gonna tell you this is because it, it's gonna be a little bit of a wake up call to you that it can happen to just about anyone. And we have great systems that really do a great job of uh, keeping our team members in line and, and motivated, but at the same time, I'm gonna use this again, but stuff happens. So uh, let's back up, uh, what's the first one? GL. GL, general liability, if something goes wrong, if you damage anything. There, there's this great story, this is not about two maids and a mop, but I read this story years ago about a, um, a judge, I forgot what city it was, but a judge had hired two people to clean his home, and the same two people had been cleaning it for years. And uh, apparently on the way to, the, to his home that particular day to clean it, they had an accident. So uh, they, they hit someone and there was some damage to the car and they themselves had some injuries. So the, the ironic thing is this judge was sued because of two things. There was no GL policy in place to protect the damage mm. and there was no workers comp place to, to account for the, the injuries. So he had to come out of pocket, which was over $50,000. Um, it's a lot of money, right? Mm. Yeah, it's a lot of money. So, you know, it, no one ever thinks it can happen to them. The costs are, you know, significant. They're, they're not cheap. And every business is different. The more you grow, the higher they're going to be. But so will your risk. So, GL policy, get it. Don't even think twice about it. That goes up to however far you want to go. I'd recommend at least $500,000 worth of uh, protection. Uh, two Maze Mop has a couple million. Uh, secondly, uh, Workers' comp, that's for injuries. You know, we've had injuries uh, in, our own, in our own case, and uh, I can tell you when, when those things occur, they're, they're both scary, um, tough to deal with, but at the same time, we, we, feel com we feel good knowing that we can protect the people whenever, our people whenever they're injured. And then, of course, the, the bond. The bond is, um, is something everybody says, honest truth, I hate to say it like this, but you can get a bond for 100 bucks, you know, and, and that's not just any old cleaning company. That's the largest cleaning companies in America. They're cheap. The reason they're cheap is that most people don't understand the exclusions that are uh, inside of a bond. And, and David hinted on one of those. You do have to hire bondable employees. We're not going to go through that because every bond company has different requirements for a bond. Um, <clears throat> but it's important for you under to understand what the requirements are inside of that bond in order for you to make sure that you can use that bond. So uh, look into a bond, but also look into the insides of that bond. There are some other things, you know, two maze to mop doesn't require cars or automobiles, but uh, if you do, you, you, will want, you will want to look into some type of automobile policy. And then also there's the, a great thing, employer, it's a fairly new thing called employer practices, li liability insurance sexy stuff too, but um, if something goes wrong, and I'm not gonna go through all those things, but if there's any type of, I guess I will go through these things, sexual harassment or uh, wrongful termination, I could go on and on and on, then that protects the business from some, some of those things as well. I almost use the word stuff again. So, you like uh, it. Yeah. We gotta, <laughs> so, so insurance, uh, how to start a business, all that stuff's out there for you. Um, hopefully we've been uh, informative and you've, you've learned a lot uh, on how to start a business and how to keep it growing, how to, how to keep it open, I should say. So we'll see you next week. Thanks again for uh, visiting Cleaning Business TV. All right. What are we talking about next week? The were strengths and weaknesses of mm -hmm. the cleaning industry. Mm -hmm. Should be great. I love it. Look forward to seeing you back again.